unsettling is what I love. Why are some people drawn to unsettling things? Like, why do certain collectors like myself love things that are deeply unsettling? Because it's authentic. Um, actually, the American Poet Laureate, he said, nothing that disturbs you is ever false. And that's true. My name's Evan Michelson. I'm an... Sorry. See, look, I'm professional. Now, I collect objects of rare beauty. Um, not necessarily of monetary value, but objects that tell a story. Pieces of natural history, things that come from things that once lived, things that speak to me, just things that I find beautiful. I'm constructing my dream. This house, particularly this library, is the place I've always lived inside my head. I was born into this idea that I don't know where it came from. I sort of lived in 19th century literature as a kid, and I was fascinated with naturalists and collectors. And, um, so I collect things that allow me to time travel and live in this world of my own construction. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for wax mannequins from around the turn of the century. Like I have a few here. I love their company. Because they're otherworldly, and they're uncanny, and they're based on real women. So it's as close as you can get to time travel, having real women from the turn of the century. It's kind of like having a crowd from the old days around. And I actively collect Victorian hair work because I love, it goes back to relics and sort of that Catholic idea of um, having the remains um, emanate a kind of power. Although they're only, it's only visual and aesthetic to me. I don't think it's a spiritual. I was first hospitalized at the age of nine, where I underwent a procedure that's very invasive and painful, and so a lot of this was about expressing what it is to be sort of assaulted. You know, when you're sick and you're hospitalized all the time, you really begin to identify with things that aren't protected. Being in poor health all your life, it gives you a perspective that maybe healthy people don't have for how fragile life is and how pain is really everywhere. I'm telling a very serious story. I mean, I don't know what it is to be dead, but I certainly know what it is to live in fear and pain and worry and to have one's, you know, mortality is very, very close at hand. So there's a serious subtext in all of this. It's not just cool stuff, it's very serious stuff. And the history of science and the history of medicine is a history of attempting to mitigate, you know, is attempting to relieve us of the pain and suffering of imminent death. I never related to the positive. Positive's a, another world that I don't live in. But I'm not sad. These things make me very happy. And that's the thing I think in our culture, being positive is, is emphasized so much. But there are those of us who find great happiness in the troubling. The dark. It's the dark is home. And, and some of us are born into it and are very happy there. And the more we express that through art or antiques or music, you know, it, it actually, sensitive people who don't have enough darkness in their lives find it very comforting and very enlightening. When it came time to decide what I wanted to do with my life, because it might be quite short. So I'm gonna do exactly what I wanna do, and this is the world I wanna live in. And so I just um, decided to become an antiques dealer. I will only buy and sell what I like. Not a good business plan, because <laughs> I should buy and sell things that other people like, but I do it for myself. I, I please myself, and it seems to please other people. It took me many years to come to terms with the fact that I am a materialist. But Oscar Wilde was sort of my first great muse. One of those artists that reveals yourself to yourself. And I realized, oh, I'm an esthete. So anything that's beautiful, I become fascinated with. And uh, as an antiques dealer, you have a desire not just to own. It's not purely acquisitive, but to disperse that beauty outwards to other people. When you're old, when you're young, you're young when you're old. So I was incredibly old when I was young. But then you're young when you're older. I'm never, I'll do this till I 
die and I'm never gonna... I don't think I'm gonna go through the conventional hoops. 